أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الأنعام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَى أُمَمٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِن قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا وخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون فقطع دابر القوم الذين ظلموا والحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقبة من لساني يفقه قالي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وأعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته By the grace and blessing of Allah we are starting our study today with ayah number 42 of Surah Al-Anham. In the four ayat that I have just recited, a very important divine law regarding the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been explained. The institution of prophethood, and for that matter, the institution of messengerhood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it had been a very important institution throughout the human history. And there are certain laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding this institution that were immutable, could never be changed. One of the laws was that whenever a messenger was sent to a nation or a group of people or a community or some region, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order that they should wake up from their slumbers, sent to them small afflictions, small chastisements, so that if you know, because of abundance of food and abundance of everything, because they have gone uh, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have gone to deep slumber, they might, you know, wake up from their deep slumber. But you know, if the nation that was to be doomed, you know, and they, do, they never responded to these small uh, justicements from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then after all these things, the final verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, and then there was no concession for such people to whom a messenger had been sent, who had made everything absolutely clear. There remain no doubt now for any sincere person who wanted to know what is right. There could be no difficulty now. So then the nation was eliminated, totally annihilated. That is called Azabul Akbar, when the whole nation was annihilated. And this is what happened to the people of Nuh, 
to people of Hud, to people of Saleh, to the cities to which Hazrat Luth was sent, to the people of Shaib, to the Ali Fir'aun and so on. This has been the divine law. Now this is the divine law which has been given in very brief one ayah in Surah Al-Sajda. وَلَا نُزِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ we will give them small punishments, small chastisements before the final and the big exterminating chastisement or punishment. Maybe that they wake up from their deep slumber and they return to us in repentance and, you know, asking our forgiveness. So this is the law given in these four ayat. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمِّ مِنْ قَبْلِكْ O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we sent our messengers to so many nations before you. فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَعْسَاءِ We seized them with misery, وَالْضَرَّاءِ and distress. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ So that they may be humble towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They may turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَوْ لَا إِجَاهُمْ بَعْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُونَ Then why did not when such afflictions came to them, why didn't they humiliate? Why did not uh, they showed humbleness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Walakin qasat qulubahu. But their hearts had already hardened. Hardened to that extent that even these chastisements could not wake them up from their slumbers. And Satan had made what they were doing very beautiful for them. Well, we are doing very good deeds. We are prospering. We have a, you know, very good civilization. Our culture is very high. We are holding high position. All these things, you know, they made them stick to their wrong paths. And even these smaller chastisements from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which were sent to wake them up from their slumbers, they couldn't wake them. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ now this nasu here doesn't mean nisyan in the means of forgetting something. Because there we have find, we, we can find in, in another ayah of the Qur'an, إِنَّا نَسِيْنَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيْتُمْ لِقَا يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا So nisyan here means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never have anything, you know, like forgetfulness. Nisyan here means to ignore. Just, you know, turn away. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ When they ignored. All that with which they were admonished. We sent them our ayat. We showed, we gave the, the messengers the miracles also. Everything came to them. Now they just ignored everything. Then, and then we opened the gates of all blessings on them. Okay, if you are going that way, go. And we, are, we give you more to eat. We, we, we shall give you more to enjoy. Hatta ida farehu, when they were rejoicing, you know, their, you know, their slumber were deepened, absolute, uh, uh, rather, in, instead of being uh, rising from the, their deep sleep. Faiza farehu, utu, bima utu, what have, what we had been given, which, what we had given to them. Akhazna hum baktatan faiza hum ublisun, then we seized them suddenly. And then they were in despair and frustration. And then the roots of that nation, evil doing nation, was cut off. The roots were cut off. This is, you know, final punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the whole nation is done away with. There are so many modes of expression in the Quran for this also. Uh, when we find, you know, for. Those people now, it appeared they never, they never existed. When the people of Nuh were finished and annihilated, exterminated, it seemed that they never lived in, on this earth. When this, this nation of Ad was eliminated, now you could see their dwellings, you could see their palaces that, were they, that they had built, but not the people who were living in it. Kalam yagno fiha. They became as if they were never living in these cities in thousand regions. And another mode of expression, La yura illa masake nohum. Now you can see only the dwellings in which they were used, they, they used to dwell and live. Not the people, not the dwellers therein. 
So this has been a law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the messengers. But this is not the law for the prophets. This is only for the messengers. And this is agreed upon among all the scholars and, you know, the Mufassirin of Quran, that prophethood is general. Messengerhood is special. Every messenger must be a prophet also. But every prophet is not a messenger. Prophets who were not messengers, they were just like the awliya Allah, the very pious people living among the men. But you know, to them was coming Mahi also. Revelation was coming. But they were not appointed specifically to a nation. But when a prophet was appointed specifically, go to Fir'aun. Izhabila Fir'aun innahu taha. Now with this special appointment, now he become, became a messenger. Waila adi nakhahum huda. Specific appointment. To the people of Ad, we sent from their own brethren, Hud. Waila samuda. So actually when a prophet is appointed, just as we have, I don't know what is the case here in Pakistan, there is a cadre of civil service. Somebody has qualified to be CSP. Now he can be appointed as a deputy commissioner somewhere. So that is an appointment. But his cadre remains, he is a member of the CSP. Then there is a lower rank and that is PCS. These ranks remain the same. But the appointments can change. He can, he can be appointed as deputy commissioner somewhere or some deputy secretary in the central government and so on. So that is appointment. Prophethood is the cadre to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending his revelation. Maybe he has, he has not been appointed for a particular people. He will be living. You can have the example of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. He never called that just believe me. Aminu bi. He didn't put the condition to the king of Egypt. Unless you believe in me, I am not going to help you out of all this, you know, catastrophe that is going to befall your country. No. He was a Nabi. He was a prophet only. Not a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the difference. Nabi and Rasul, there's a difference. And that is why I gave you these, you know, these ayat, they are the law. For there has been, the, we must say, it has been the law, because now this institution of prophethood as well as messengerhood has come to an end. This has been the law with the messengers. Whenever a messenger was sent to a nation, now there was no third alternative. Either you believe in him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you all the blessings. If you reject the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now you forego your right of existence on this planet. You will be done away with. You will be exterminated. The whole nation annihilated. And that is, you know, the story of all these messengers, which is being repeated many a time in the Quran. What happened to the people of Nuh? What happened to the people of Hud? What happened to the people of Saleh? What happened to the cities to which Luth was sent? What happened to uh, the people of Shaib? What happened to Ali Firaun? Why? This was the divine law. It must be remembered. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ وَخَتَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَعْتِيكُمْ بِهِ Say to them, O Prophet ﷺ, just ponder over it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away your sight, your faculty of hearing, and if He puts a seal on your hearts, who is that God besides Allah, except Allah, who can bring back to you these faculties? Unzur kaifa nusar full ayat. See how we are explaining our ayat variously, in various forms. Tasrif means to, to, to rotate a thing. One thing said in one style, then the same thing repeated in another style. If you couldn't understand it this way, well, this, this way and this mode might be intelligible for you. But they are turning away. Again, say to them, have you ever thought if the punishment from Allah comes to you suddenly, 
without any notice, bakta means something happens without any notice. Aw jaratan, an attack which comes openly and after giving a warning. Hal yohla koil al qawmu zalimun, who will be destroyed and finished with except these people who are evil doers. Wama nursalul mursalina illa mubashirina wa munzirin. This ayah we have read in Surah An-Nisa also. Rusulam mubashirina wa munzirin. And I explained that these are the two basic functions of all the messengers that they have to give glad tidings to the people who take to the right path. And they are, they are the warners for those who don't take to the right path, who are going on the wrong path, despite all the warnings. وَمَانْ أُرْسَلُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزَرِينَ They don't come with some authority that they can perforce take somebody to the right path. As I told you, the most important example is that of Abu Talib. The Prophet ﷺ, how much he loved that he should embrace Islam. He said when he was dying, when Abu Talib was dying, Oh dear uncle, please utter these words, أَشْهَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَّهِ اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Maybe you utter these words in my ears so that I can testify on the day of judgment that this uncle of mine had accepted Islam. But he refused. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاء O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, you can't bring to the right path anybody whom you liked. This is the prerogative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only he has the authority. He can, you know, turn the face of anybody in any direction. Because all the hearts, as I told you, according to a hadith, the hearts of all the people, they are between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can turn them any way, to any side, to any direction. But this authority is not given to any other person. Not even the prophets. And not even the, the, the chief of the prophets, Sayyidul Mursaleen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا نُرْسَلُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ And we don't send... And we don't, you know, raise our, our messengers, but only as the bearers of glad tidings and warning. Now it is up to the people. Whosoever comes to believe and he mends his way, for them there will be no fear and no grief. They will never be grieved. The same simultaneous contrast again. And those who belie our signs and our revelation, ayat, covers both the things. All the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe the miracles, maybe all the signs, you know, in the heavens and the earth. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal lardi wa khtilafi layli wal nahari la ayatil liuli lalbaab. And then, you know, the revelations also, they are ayat. Walladhina kazzabu bi ayatina. يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَابُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Then you know, they will be afflicted with the punishment due to their transgressing. قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنْدِي خَضَائِنُ اللَّهِ This is another very important thing about the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never claim that they have some extra authority. They had the powers to do anything they like. They have the power to show miracles on their own. No. What's the position? Just, you know, focus your attention on this ayah. We have different notions, you know. But what is the actual position of a messenger of Allah? What has been the actual position? If this is the position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final prophet and the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what to speak about the others? قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنْدِي خَدَعِنُ اللَّهِ Say, I have never claimed, I don't claim, I don't say to you, that I own the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا عَلَمُ الْغَيْبِ And I don't claim to know the unseen, except the, the knowledge that Allah gives me. I don't know it on my own. The unseen is unseen. وَلَا عَلَمُ الْغَيْبِ وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكِ Nor do I claim to be an angel. I am also a man, a human being. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِسْلُكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُحَا إِلَيَّا I am only following what has been revealed, what is being revealed to me. This is my position. The only difference between you and me is 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending me his revelations. I'm also a human, be human being. I don't claim to be an angel. I don't claim I have all the powers, all the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I never claim that I can show you any miracle you demand. I never said it. قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكُ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ اللَّهِ مَا يُحَا إِلَيَّ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَبِ الْعَمَا وَالْبَصِيرِ Now, can they be who are seeing equal to those who are blind? Who can see the truth and who, does, who, who closes his eyes towards the truth? They can't be equal. أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ so do you not ponder over these things? Don't you use your intellect? أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ وَأَنزِرْ بِهِ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَنْ يُحْشَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ Again in this very surah we found in the beginning. أُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ Here again. وَأَنزِرْ بِهِ O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Go on warning them with this Qur'an. You war with this Qur'an because you are a warner. You give the glad tidings through this Qur'an because you are the bearer of the glad, glad tidings. But this, these duties you have to perform through Qur'an. Read out to the people Qur'an. It is sufficient to guide them. If somebody likes to be guided, it is sufficient to guide them. There is no need of any other thing. So, anzir bihi alladhina yakhafuna yuhsharu ila rabbihim. Those who have some fear that they will be gathered to their Lord. They will be gathered someday. لَا سَلَهُمْ مِن دُونَهِ وَلِيُّ وَلَا شَفْرِي And on that day, they will have no wali, no protector, no shafi, no intercessor against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find none to protect you, none to intercede. Now about this intercession, we find two types of ayat in the Qur'an. Either there is categorical denial, no intercession, or there is an exception also. إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُوا إِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ With his permission, this is an exception. But absolute intercession and thinking that somebody has the power that he can change the verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can come in the way of the of the verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has some power over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he is so dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will never reject his intercession. All these things, you know, they are false. Tilka amaniyuhum. These are the wishful thinking, you know, people have been having. And these uh, amani were there among the Jews also. And these amani are here among the Muslims also. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِن دُونَهِ وَلِيُّ وَلَا شَفْرِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that... If you are doing, if you are warning them, maybe they have taqwa. They become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They try to, to save themselves from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the punishment of the hereafter. وَلَا تَطْرُدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيرِ And don't drive away those people. You know, there was an objection of the chiefs of the tribes. Well, Muhammad, we want to come to you. But how can we come to you? We find that you know people who are very low in status. Always they are sitting with you. These people are our slaves. Who is this Bilal? He's a slave. Who is this Yasir? He is actually, he, does, he doesn't have the honor and respect of a Karshi. He's an alien. But now you are always surrounded by such people, poor people. How can we come to your company? So, you just turn them away. This has been a common thing. All the chiefs and all the, you know, the noble people, so to say, as they thought themselves to be, they said, we can't come and sit along with these people, you know, who are arazuluna badi rai. We can see that they are, you know, menials for our, in our society. So, this is the objection. Now, might be that an idea could have come to the mind of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I just say that at this time, because you know the chiefs are coming, the noble people of Quraysh are coming, you don't come at that time. But this is, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been commanded here not to do it. 
ولا قتل الذينت يدعون ربهم بالغداه ولا شيء dont drive away those who call and pray to allah to their lord in the mornings also and in the evenings also you read una wajhahu they only want to have the face of allah and what does it mean if you are pleased with somebody you you are face to face with him if you are annoyed you turn your face away on the side so they want the player of allah subhanahu wa taala you read una wajhahu what does it mean they are seeking the player of allah subhanahu wa taala ma alayka min hisabihim min shay you are not accountable for anything regarding their accounts wama min hisabik alayhim shay neither they are accountable due to anything which pertains to you you have to do your duty you have to call people all human beings are all equal you call these people who shall respond now you must embrace him you must give the attention to him you must love him whosoever has responded positively to the call maybe he is from the high uh, cadres of the society or maybe he belongs to the lower cadres of the society it is absolutely irrelevant fatatrudahum if you drive them away fatakul amir zalimi a very stern warning then you will become yourself from among the evil doers don't discriminate between these diff- different levels that only the high people can come to you the nobility can come to you and not these common people who whom they call the menials wa kadhalika fatarna ba'dahum bi ba'd and in this way we have we have to, we try and test someone through someone else i have made them belonging to the class of slaves and made him and i have made made him he was born to a chief of the of any clan of the quraish i have done this for them so that i try and test you with each other wa kadhalika fatarna ba'dahum bi ba'd li yaqulu ha haula al ha haula man allahu alayhi min badna so that these should say this nobility would say are these the people the menials of our society allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them leaving us aside because if this is his real blessing of allah then they are the blessed ones how come we are the chiefs we are wealthy people we are the strong type strong people we have all the uh, things of this world and is these are the people chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this bilal this abbar this yasir are these the people whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed allah sallallahu ala ma bi shakirin is not allah more aware of who is really grateful allah knows that bilal is grateful to him allah knows that yasir is grateful to him thankful to him allah knows that abu jahl is arrogant he might be a chief in his own place but allah subhanahu wa taala don't you know the criteria with allah subhanahu wa taala are different from the criteria that you have in your mind waiza jaat alladheena yu'minun now just focus your attention please now firstly there was the commandment don't drive them away these poor people these slaves whosoever they are if they are responded positively to your call if you if they believe in allah if they call allah evenings and mornings if they are also want the prayer of allah you embrace them now the positive side waiza jaak alladheena yu'minuna bi ayatina and when those who believe in our revelations come to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa qul salamun alaykum you should welcome them with greetings salute them say to them peace be upon you kataba rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma your lord congratulations your lord has taken upon himself mercy he will deal with you with the all the mercy that he has annahu man amila minkum su'an bi jahalatin and one manifestation of his mercy is that whosoever amongst you commits something wrong something evil due to ignorance and jahala means in arabic also you know emotional a person who is emotional not logical not rational he is also jahil ignorance as well as emotionalism so in some emotional outburst you know 
If you somebody has has from amongst you committed something wrong, summa taba mimbadehi, but then he repents. He turns his face again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Vaslaha and he mends his way. He rectifies himself. The, the mistake that he, can, he committed, he rectifies it. Fanfanahu ghafur rahim. This is the this is the glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa taala is ghafur, He is forgiving and He is merciful. Wa kazalika nufasilul ayat wa le tastabi na sabilul mujrimin. And in this way, we are making our revelations explained. Nufasilu tafsil. Kazalika nufasilul ayat. We are explaining our revelations. Wa le tastabi na sabilul mujrimin. Or so that. The way of the criminals, the way of the sinners should become absolutely clear so that the moment can avoid the ways and means and etiquettes of those who are sinning, who are unbelieving. <laughs> Say to them, O oh Muhammad, I have been prohibited and forbidden. I cannot worship. Those whom you are calling besides Allah. There can be no compromise between you and me. They wanted a compromise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no compromise. What do law to dhinu for you dhinun? They want that you compromise somewhat. And they will also be ready to compromise. Some give and take. Because they had reached the conclusion that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have not been able to stop his, his dawah spreading. Because this surah that was revealed, as I told you, in the last year, just one year or, or, or so before Hijrah. So during this time, they had tried all their means. They had persecuted, they had done some, everything that they could do, and they found that now it's impossible. You know, this, the advance and spreading of this message cannot be stopped. So they wanted some compromise. Okay, you somewhat, you should be lenient. You should accommodate our point of view also, to some degree. Then we can have, you know, a compromise. I have been forbidden. I can't do it. I can't worship. I can't love. I can't prostrate before these deities to whom, you know, you are praying. Tell them, I cannot follow your wishful thinkings. Your lusts, your desires, I cannot. If I do so, I will also go astray. If I take to your path, then I will also be doomed. And then I will not be from among the rightly guided people. I can't have any compromise with you. See the self, you know, confidence, which Allah Taala wants in a da'i, he should have in his da'wah. Whatever his disposition, he should have full confidence. Qul inni ala bayyanat minki. Min Rabbi. Tell them, I am on something which is absolutely clear and infallible guidance. Bayyana. What is bayyana? We say it in Urdu, bilkul bayyan baat hai. A thing which is absolutely self-evident. It's absolutely clear. It needs no additional proof. Bayyana. Qul inni ala bayyanatim min rabbi. You know, I am not groping in the darkness. I am actually, my position is based on absolute bayyanat. These are self-evident truths which, you know, I have accepted. Wakazabtum bihi. And you have belied them. You are not accepting it. Although it is absolutely evident, just as, you know, when the sun rises, Aftab Ahmad, Dalil Aftab. When the sun rises, it doesn't need any additional argument that there is a sun. The sun is there, everybody can see it. That is Bayyan. Aftab Ahmad, Dalil Aftab. Now these teachings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down on me, for you, they are just Bayyan. But you are denying them. You are rejecting them. Vakazzabtum bihi. Ma indi ma tastajaluna bihi. I don't possess what you are hastening for. They used to say, for the sake of argument, Okay, O oh Muhammad, we have rejected you. You have preached to us for 12 long years. We have rejected you. 
now bring the punishment from allah subhanahu wa taala that was another way to impress their people that these people you know they are very sincere actually had they any belief in muhammad had their hearts and and minds believed in muhammad to any degree they couldn't say this thing that now bring we are ready bring the punishment the start jaluna bhi but it is not in my power it is not my authority it is to be decided by allah subhanahu wa taala that you know is not my authority mind the ma tastajaluna bihi i don't for this i don't have to decide which you are hastening for you are demanding in al hukm illa lillah authority is wholly and solely for allah subhanahu wa taala this here also you know the position of the messengers it must be clear they don't claim we have the authority i can bring you know devastation and punishment and azab whenever i like no i am a humble servant of allah he has sent down the revelation he has appointed me to convey the revelation to you and that i am doing it's nothing my business it doesn't concern me when he decides to punish you actually it is up to him in al hukm illa lillah ya qusul haqq wa huwa khair al fasilin he is relating what is the truth these ayat they consist of the truth now he is conveying these things to you wa huwa khair al fasilin and he is the best of the deciders he will decide when you know no more concession to you and the punishment should come to you just as the punishment came to the people of nuh or the people of hud or the people of saleh alayhi salatu wassalam qul la anna a very natural qul la anna indi ma tastajiluna bihi say to them had i the power over what you are demanding you are saying bring this punishment why is that punishment is not coming it means you are a liar it means you are not messenger of allah had you been messenger of allah as you say that the people of hud they were exterminated the people of uh, saleh exterminated but we have been rejecting you for 12 long years no punishment has come to us up till now it means you are not a messenger of allah qul la anna indi ma tastajiru nabi had it been in my power had it been with me the authority la qadi al amru baini wa bainakum then you know the matter would have been finished between you and me i am also a human being i am also fed up with your attitude but you know it's not in my power it's for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide la qadi al amru baini wa bainakum it would have been decided long ago but it actually it is not in my power wallahu alam bi zalimin and allah is very well knows all the evil doers and he will deal with them wa indahu mafatihul ghaib so you know this is all tawhid and how you know clearly the distinction between allah and his bonds man although muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the highest among the prophets and messengers he stands next to allah subhanahu wa taala in all the creation all angels everything he is just next to baad az khuda buzurg to hi qissa mukhtasar after allah subhanahu wa taala you are the supreme but even he is in this position as i quoted to you a saying of ibn arabi ar rabb rabbun wa in tanazzal wal abd abdun wa in tarqa rabb remains rabb although he comes down to the first heaven every night in the small hours of the morning and the bondsman the abd the servant remains the servant although he went to the seventh heaven even there he is a servant of allah he is abd of allah but you know rabb is rabb this distinction wa indahu mafatihul ghaib and actually he owns all the keys of all the unseen in the who la ya'lamu ha illa hu nobody knows them except him all the ghaib nobody knows although he has given some knowledge of the unseen to the messengers a messenger and a prophet 
is only differentiated from common human beings because something has been given to him which is not given to all the people. Muhammad was shown paradise. Muhammad could, had seen, you know, the hell also. So all these things. Muhammad was meeting the angels. They also belong to the unseen. We can't see the angel. So some of the unseen is opened and disclosed to the messengers and prophets. But you know not all. La yalamu ha illahu wa yalamu ma fil barri wal bahar. And he knows whatever is in the land and whatever is in the sea. Ma tasputu min barakatin illa yalamu ha. Not a single leaf drops down. But he knows it. He is all aware. Ma tasputu min barakatin illa yalamu ha. Wa la habbatin fi zulumat illa fi barra. And in the same way, no grain in the darkness of the earth. A grain, you know, you have sowed a seed. Now this is in the darkness of the earth. But Allah knows which grain is lying where. And when to sprout, when to become a plant, He knows it. Wala ratmi wala yabesin. And no wet or no dry. Illa fi kitabim mubeen. But everything is in a clear record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This kitabim mubeen is actually the attribute of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is in the knowledge. Nothing is out of his knowledge. And this is the book. This is the book of record. And actually everything is recorded in it. And it is he who takes the possession of your souls during the nights. When you sleep, you are unaware of yourself. The self-consciousness has gone. Where has it gone to? Allahu Allazi, Hu Allazi yatawaffa, yatawaffa kum bil-layl. He controls, he possesses the souls of human beings during the night. Wa yalamu ma jarah tum bin nahar, and he knows what had you done during the day. Summa yabasu kum fi, and after this night, he will again, you know, raise you up in the morning. You wake up, and that is why you know. The Prophet used to make the dua when he, when he opened his eyes in the morning, you know. When he woke up, Alhamdulillah, Lazi Ahyani Badama Amatani, Wailahin Nushur. This, you know, sleep is also a sister of death. It's very near the death. Because we leave, we, 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 we don't have the self consciousness. So that is actually something very near to death. Oh, that is why this word wafat. Huwa al-lazi yatawafakum. Wa huwa al-lazi yatawafakum bil-layl. Wa ya'lamu ma jarahtum bil-nahar. Summa yab'asukum fi. Le yakza ajalum musamma. So that the ajal, the time which has been fixed for you in this world should be completed. If you have to live here 30 years, well every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the possession of your souls. Then you know again in the morning He will return your souls to you. And you will be again, you know, a, a moving human being. So that that period which has been assigned beforehand, that is completed. Then to him is going to be your return. And then he will inform you of what you had been doing. You know, the, all the basic tenets and articles of faith are being repeated and repeated and repeated. I told you that is the main subject matter of the Makki Surahs. Allah, His unity, His attributes, Akhirah, resurrection, judgment, day of judgment, then the Jannah, and you know, the Jahannam, the hell and paradise and heaven. It, these are the subjects, repeated, repeated in different modes, in different styles. Ek pool ka mazmoo ho to saw rang se baandhu. That should be repeated. But not repeated in the same way or in the same words. Repeated. That is called tasreeful ayat. We, we, we take various modes of expression. We change, keep on going, we keep going changing the modes of expression. Kadalika nusarreful ayat. Wahu al kahiru fauqa ibadihi. And he is Fully controlling you. Now this Kahir, you know, actually whosoever is absolutely controlling. Huwal Kahir of Fawqa Ibadi. 
Nobody can go beyond his authority. Over his servants. And he sends upon you guardians. Now these guardians are of two types. The angels. Number one, who guard our lives because that Ajal al-Musamma is to be completed. They are guarding you. You don't need any other guards. Allah is guarding you. No bodyguards. Because you cannot be killed before that appointed time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent upon you the guardians. They are guarding you. They are, they are, they are your bodyguards. And secondly, they are guarding or recording all what you are doing. And all what you are uttering. Alaykum hafaza. Bahuwa al kahiru fauqa ibadihi. Bayusri alaykum hafaza. Hatta iza jadakumul bot. Till that time that the appointed hour for him comes. Tawafatu rasulullah. Now the our messengers. Now this means the, the angels, the angels of death. They will take the possession of their souls. Wala you farbetun. And they are not going to omit anything, commit any mistake. Summa ruddu haq. And then they will be returned to Allah, who is their protector, and who is the true protector, and true, true guardian, and true sustainer. Maulahumul haq. Alalahul huq. Listen. To him belongs all authority. Just imagine how many times this is coming. إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ أَلَا لَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَهُوَ أَسْرَعُ الْحَاسِبِينَ And he is the swiftest in taking account, in reckoning. He will not need much time to prepare your balance sheets of what you earned, what you lost. He will, in no time, he will reckon. And in no time, he will take all the accounts of all the people. قُلْ مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ تَدْعُونَهُ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيًا Ask them, who rescues you from the darknesses of the land and the sea? تَدْعُونَهُ You pray to him, تَضَرُّعًا Humbly, وَخُفْيًا And secretly, oh Allah, you know you are riding a boat, there is some storm, now, Oh Allah, just save me this time. Then you know, I'll be absolutely, I'll mend my ways. I'll do, do nothing wrong. Tadarruam wa khufya. In your hearts you are calling him. Qul man yunajjikum min zulumat al barri wal bahar. Tadarruunahu tadarruam wa khufya. Layn anjana min hadihi lanakunanna min al-shakirin. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves us from this, then we should become, you know, very grateful to him. And we should act as grateful people, thankful people. Qul illahu yunajjikum. Tell them, it's only Allah who saves you, who rescues you. Minha wa min kulli karmin. And from all the distresses that may befall you, summa antum tushnikun. But then, when you are saved, then you start making shirk with him. Then you start calling other gods and goddesses and aliha and manat and laat and uzza. Now you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now you are prostrating before other deities. Qul huwa al-qadiru ala an yab'asa alaykum azaba min fawqikum. This is a very important ayah. And we must, you know, read in between the lines. Where do we stand regarding this ayah? Qul huwa al-qadiru ala an yab'asa alaykum azaba min fawqikum aw min tahti arjulikum. أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا وَيُزِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَعْصَ بَعْصَ Three modes of punishment in this world. Say to them, He is all powerful, هو القادر على أن يبعص عليكم عذابا That He may send upon you, He may send upon you a punishment, a chastisement from over your heads. How min tahti arjulikum? Or from underneath your feet? Might be there's a big earthquake, and you know, under your, underneath your feet, 
from there, there, azab of Allah, punishment of Allah is coming. And the third mode, aw yalbisakum shi'an, or he may throw you into confusion and divide you into sects and groups. Aw yalbisakum shi'an, wa yuziqa ba'zakum ba'za ba'z, and taste and make you taste the tyranny of one another. Kill each other. We don't need to send something from the heaven. We don't need to, to bring out something from the earth from underneath your, your feet. If you are fighting each other, it's also the third and the worst form of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَصَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَزَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَرْجُلِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيَعًا وَيُذِيقَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَعْضَ 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 انظر كيف نصرف الآيات again the same word تصريف الآيات look oh Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم how we are using the various and different modes to explain our revelations لَعَلَّهُمْ يَفْتَهُونَ so that they might understand وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكَ وَهُوَ الْحَقِّ now you look to the decisive style here وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكَ oh Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم your people have belied this thing, this revelation, this Quran, Bahu'al Haq, although it is the truth, the total truth. So it does mean they have committed the crime. Now they deserve punishment. It's our mercy that we are withholding their punishment up till now. But they have deserved. But Tasama Bihi Qawmuka Bahu'al Haq, Qul Lastu Alaykum Bi Wakil. Tell them, I am not any guardian for you. I won't be able to save you from divine punishment and chastisement if it comes to you. It's a different story that for every event, for every news, there is a time fixed in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you say, bring that punishment, I can't bring. Even if I want that the punishment should come to you, well, my wishing is also not decisive. Had it been in my power, the matter would have been settled between you and me long, long ago. This is neither in your power nor in mine. But it is in the hands of Allah. For every news, there is a time fixed. And then you will see and you will know yourself for yourself. And when you see people who are meddling with our revelations, they, may, they used to mock at it scoff it, and so on. But this is the instruction to all the Muslims which was given. And we read this ayah in Surah An-Nisa also, and this ayah was referred. When you see people, they are, they are meddling with the revelations, you turn away from there. Don't sit with them. Until they are engaged in some other discourse, then you can come to them. Because you can't leave them, you know, forever. You have to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can't part from them permanently. Hatta yakhudu fi hadithin ghairi. Bai ma yunsiyannaka shaitan. And if Satan makes you forget, you are sitting with them, they are meddling and joking about the, the prophet of Allah or the ayat of Allah, and you just... He didn't remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has commanded me to go away and not sit there. وَإِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ الشَّيْطَانُ فَلَا تَقْوَدْ بَعْدَ الزِّكْرَ When a recollection comes to you, when you remember, now don't sit for another even one second. مَا الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ With these people who are evil doers. وَمَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ مِنْ إِسَابِهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And definitely, people who have fear of Allah, who are conscious of Allah, who have accepted Allah, who love Allah, on them there is no responsibility of these people. If they are going astray, they will face their what, whatever, you know, punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them. It's not on you. You will not be brought to the book regarding them on their account. But this is a remembrance. This is admonition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending these ayat to remind them Maybe that someone of them, they take to taqwa, they become muttaqi, they become God-conscious, they mend their ways. 
And you leave alone these people who have taken their religion as only laibam wa lahwa, a play or an amusement. They don't take their, their religion seriously. We can fight people today also. They, they are not serious about religion. And such was the case about those people also. They thought that they believe in these and these and these things, but they were not very serious about these things. This life of this world has deceived them. They are deceived by this life, fully occupied by it. As Allama Iqbal says, Kafir ki ye pehchan ke aafaq mein gum hai. Aur momin ki ye pehchan ke gum us mein hai aafaq. A kafir is lost in this universe. He just loses the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is engrossed in this creation, in this world of matter. But a moment, he lives in this world, but he rises to a higher level of consciousness, and he is always conscious of the creator, of the rub, of the master. Actually, this is the difference. And zakir behi, now third time note. Zakir behi, this pronoun behi, what is it alluding to? Quran. Zakir behi, try to remind them with this Quran. As you know, the last ayah of Surah Al-Qaf. Zakir bil Quran iman yakhaf wa'id. Tazkir, you know, sermons, remindings, they should be through Quran. This is the best reminder. Who can have a better reminder than the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You don't try to make your own long speeches. There's no need. That is why we don't find very long speeches of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in the khutbah of Jumah, he used to recite Quran. Wherever he went to preach, he recited to them the ayat of Quran. This is the best mode, the best vehicle of, of conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But zakir bihi, and remind them with this. Lest the soul of a person should be ruined due to what it has earned. And again the repetition of the same thing. For that soul, human soul, there is no wali protector, wala shafi, no intercessor. As I told you, Somewhere you find absolute categorical denial of no intercession whatsoever. And if you want to, to ransom yourself with paying some fine, etc., it will not be la minha. It will not be accepted from him. They are the people who have been ruined due to their earnings, whatever they have earned, their deeds. Lahum sharabu min hamimin. For them will be the, the boiling water for drinking. Wa'azabun alimun. And very painful torment bima kanu yakfurun. Due to the kufr that they had been doing. Due to the rejection of the faith and belying of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul an adu min dunillahi ma la yanfa'una wa la yadurruna. Say to them, should we pray to and call to those deities Besides Allah, leaving alone Allah, who cannot benefit us, nor can they do us any harm. This last cannot benefit you. This Uzza cannot benefit you anything. Nor they can do you any harm. Anadu min dun illai bala yalfauna wala yaburuna. Wa nuraddu ala aqabina baada is hadan Allah. And do you wish that we should also be turned back on our heels when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to the right path? Because they were pressurizing the Muslims. You come back to the, to the deen of your forefathers. Why have you gone away from the, the beliefs of your forefathers? Your forefathers used to pray to this Lat and Uzzah and Manat and so and so forth. Why have you left them? Call another Say to them, should we call and pray to those who cannot do any benefit to us? No good to us. Neither they can harm us. And we should be turned back on our heels. Ba'da is hadan Allah. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the right guidance. Tell the istahwat hu shayateen of fil ardi hairan. Like those, like the one whom the Satans have lured to bewilderment in the earth. 
دو ہی ہیز کمپینینس لہو اصحاب یلہ الہدا کے نا دو ہی ہیز کمپینینس ریکننگ ہم ٹو گائیڈنس ریکننگ ہم ٹو گائیڈنس سینگ اے تینا کم ٹو اس کل ان ہدا اللہ الہدا گائیڈنس از دی گائیڈنس آف اللہ و امر نہ لسلم رب العالمین اینڈ وی ہیو بین کمانڈیڈ ٹو سبمٹ ٹو دی لارڈ آف آل دی ورلڈ نا دس سملی از ویری گڈ بیکاز ان مکہ دیر ور پیپل آلسو ہو ور کالنگ ٹوڈس اللہ اینڈ دیر ور پیپل ہو ور پریسنگ دین ٹو گو بیک ٹو دیئر اینسیسٹرل ریلیجن او ان دس کنڈیشن وی ہیو پیپل ہو ور کالنگ اس ٹو اللہ وی ہیو محمد وی ہیو ابو بکر دے آر کالنگ اس ٹو دی رائٹ پارٹ ہاؤ کین وی گو بیک اینڈ گو بیک آن اوور ہیلس ٹو دیٹ ریلیجن آف دی پاسٹ وچ یو نو واز پوزسٹ اینڈ پروفیسڈ بائی اوور فور فادرس وَنَا قِيمُ السَّلَاةَ وَالتَّقُوهُ And that you establish the prayer and have taqwa of Allah. وَهُوَ الَّذِي إِلَيْهِ تُشَرُونَ And He is the one to Him to whom you will all be gathered. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us. or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.